Hey everyone, welcome back to Footy Leagues Around the World. It is your host, Ryan. Today we are going to be exploring what football is like on the largest island in the world. That island is also 80% covered in ice. Despite this fact, football is massive here. It's the number one sport as a matter of fact, and the territory's footballing history goes back much farther than you probably ever knew. Today we will be exploring the Football Pyramid of Greenland. Footy leagues around the world. Footy leagues, heck yeah! Before we begin, a quick shout out to you all. Thank you for the continued support. It's been a really fun summer making weird football videos. And if you want to keep up with the channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell. Please feel free to continue suggesting video topics and countries that we should cover next. The list is getting pretty long, but I promise we will get to all of them eventually. Okay, without further ado, let's learn about Greenland. Greenland is an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark, meaning its residents are full citizens of Denmark and the European Union. Like I mentioned earlier, it is the largest island in the world. 80% of it is covered in ice caps. Its population is estimated to be 56,583. Its official language is Greenlandic, although Danish and English are recognized, and its capital and largest city is Nook. There is one tier to the men's Greenlandic football pyramid, which consists of one league called the Greenlandic Football Championship. This league has received some attention because it has been called the shortest league season in the entire world, which is probably true, but comes with a caveat. It is true that the league's final stage only lasts a single week, but in past years, there have been qualifying stages beforehand to determine which teams make it to the final stage. Each of the five municipalities or administrative regions in Greenland have their own qualifying tournament, which all starts sometime in July. Still, this would mean that the entire league season lasts about a month, which probably still makes it the shortest league in the world. If you happen to know for sure, let me know in the comments below. How these qualifiers work has not always been clear. Take 2022, for example. In Semersuk, Greenland's most populous municipality, by the way, I'm going to be butchering these pronunciations, so my apologies in advance, five teams competed over four games each, and at the end, the top two teams qualified for the finals. In Avenata, three teams competed, and the top team made it to the finals. In Kakata, two teams competed, and the top team, based on goal differential, qualified for the finals. In Kujelik, only one team registered, so they automatically made it to the finals. Then there was Keker Talik. Two teams competed in this region, and both teams qualified for the finals, despite Tulipak 41 getting zero points. The explanation is this. Another team, called this, not even going to try to pronounce that, apparently qualified without having entered qualifying, presumably as the only entrant from East Greenland one of three counties in the territory. However, this team withdrew and were replaced by Tulipak 41, the runners-up in Kekertalik. But why they got to qualify in the first place is still super unclear to me. For one, this team, from Tunu, should be playing within the Sirmasuk region qualifier as their town is located within Sirmasuk. But then why were they entered into the Kekertalik qualifier? I'm truly baffled by this and even sent the Football Association of Greenland an email asking for an explanation. So far, I have not heard back. Lucky for me and my brain that is about to explode, a qualifying tournament has not been held in the Greenlandic Football Championship for the past two years. In the most recent iteration of the tournament, which changes host cities every year and was held in this place this year, also known as Disco Bay, pretty cool name, Ten teams were scheduled to compete before three of them withdrew due to transportation difficulties. Remember, there are no roads in Greenland, so it's either traveling by air or by sea. The remaining teams were broken up into two pools and played their fellow group mates once before the top two teams in each group advanced to the semifinals. From here, the top team from Pool A played the second place team from Group B and vice versa in a single game before the two winning teams moved on to a single leg final. This year, B67 Nook defeated Naglungok 48 to hoist the Greenlandic Football Championship trophy. 
The most successful team in league history are current champions B67 Nook, who have 15 titles including the last two in a row. Besides its men's leagues, there is also a women's league in Greenland. It returned in 2024 after a four-year hiatus. All matches took place in Nook, only four teams entered, so no qualifying tournament took place, and matches were played nine aside. NUK, or perhaps it's pronounced Nook, were crowned champions, the club's 11th title all time. In recent years, the state of the women's game in Greenland has been in jeopardy due to a lack of teams and players. According to this article, futsal, or indoor football, is doing just fine, but the outside game has been suffering. I guess it's good that enough teams were able to register this year, and hopefully that trend will continue. The first women's football league season was held in 1986. I-69 has won the most championships with 13. Interestingly enough, that team did not participate in this year's tournament. Besides its leagues, there are a few regional cup competitions on the men's side of Greenlandic football. This year, two cups have already taken place, one in Kingatsik, a town in the municipality of Kerkertalik, and one in Nanertalik, called the Nan Cup, in the municipality of Kujalik. The Nan Cup lasted between July 1st and 5th between five teams, including a youth team of one of the participating clubs. That club, Suderok 43, ended up winning the cup 1-0 over Kalik 44. The Kengatsik Cup was held over the Easter holiday on a snow-covered pitch. A Tannermut 96 ended up winning the cup. In previous years, there have also been other regional cups, like the East Greenland Cup, the Upper Navik District Cup, the Avani Cup, and the Coombe Cup. It's unclear if any of them will be taking place this year. I also wanted to quickly mention the short-lived Greenland Cup, held between 1980 and 1984 between the national teams of Greenland, Iceland, and the Faroe Islands. At the time, none of these teams were affiliated with FIFA, so they played each other in a very short round-robin tournament. Only three cups were ever held, each team played the others just once in each of those cups, and Iceland and the Faroe Islands both won a single cup before tying in the 1984 cup. After the last tournament in 1984, the Greenland Cup was abolished. Football teams can be found in every municipality in Greenland, and because of how isolated some of these places are, most regions have their own football pitches to host games. Some are in better shape than others. In East Greenland, for example, football is played on a dirt field, but very few of these fields seem to have proper stands. It's not uncommon at all to see groups of spectators watching games perched upon rocks or nearby hills, which seems like a really unique way to watch a game. Some of these fields also offer some of the most unique backdrops you'll find in world football. Imagine watching a game with a bunch of icebergs just floating in the ocean next to you. Absolutely unreal. In order to compete on a higher level in world football and potentially host outside teams in Greenland, a domed stadium has been proposed in Nook. The renderings are absolutely beautiful. Whether this thing ever comes to fruition is anyone's guess, but I just thought it was a cool thing to point out. While it's unclear how football was first introduced to Greenlandic people, it likely had something to do with the Danes. In 1953, Greenland was officially incorporated into Denmark, and just a year later, the first Greenlandic football championship was held. Club seasons took place sporadically until 1971 when the Football Association of Greenland was formed. Since then, there has not been a pause in the Greenlandic football championship, aside from the 2020 and 2021 seasons due to C-19. Now, I don't really talk about national teams on this channel, but I would be remiss not to mention Greenland's current status in the world of football. The Territories Football Association is not affiliated with FIFA or any of the world's regional football associations, though they are trying to change that. Back in 2015, the Football Associations of Greenland in Denmark entered into an agreement to grow the sport of football in Greenland and work towards FIFA and UEFA membership by 2022. However, UEFA then updated its bylaws to forbid the admission of football associations from non-independent regions, which closed Greenland's path to becoming a UEFA member. 
In response, Greenland has turned west and have applied to become members of North America's Football Association, CONCACAF. It is not clear when CONCACAF would make a decision on allowing Greenland in or not, but I can tell you that I would be stoked to attend a USA vs. Greenland match in Greenland one day. I mean, look at those icebergs. Since all leagues in Greenland are amateur, I have not found any rules about player restrictions or anything else out of the ordinary. When it comes to players playing football within Greenland, it is incredibly hard to find actual rosters for teams currently competing in the Greenlandic Football Championship. However, due to its amateur status, I would be surprised to find many foreign players at all playing in the league. Maybe a Danish guy or two, but that's probably about it. Now as far as Greenland's national team goes, I can report that some players do, or have, played club football outside of the territory in Denmark and in the Faroe Islands. The player with the most appearances for the national side is Anders Peterson, who played 24 games between 2001 and 2017. While Greenland is not FIFA affiliated, its national team has participated in nearly every island games since 1989. The best they've done is finished runners-up. The top goal scorer of all time is Norzak Lund Matheson, who had 9 goals between 2011 and 2017. While they would qualify for the Kanifa World Football Cup, they have never entered the competition. For those that can't go to games, you're actually in luck. The final stage of the Greenlandic Football Championship is broadcasted domestically on KNR-TV, Greenland's public broadcasting station. I also have great news for us YouTube viewers. KNR-TV has its own YouTube channel that features live streams and full match videos of every Greenlandic football championship game. Man, just look at those icebergs. Well, that's it for Greenland. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying our content, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos and more icebergs, and we will see you next time.